Bodies have been left to decompose at NHS hospitals across England. We're going to read into this more from the Telegraph, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an article from The Telegraph with the headline of Bodies have been left to decompose at NHS hospitals across England. Inadequate storage and lack of freezer means some bodies are left in unsuitable temperatures for too long, says investigators. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share it across social media so others are notified of this video. To the very possibility of knowing that someone uh that someone that you know while you're waiting for to arrange their funeral service and whatnot and their body is already decomposing um and they're not in a freezer space that's pretty brutal um if 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 as well um i i just for me it's another example of our n h s failing uh here across in, in England and um, how have we gotten to a point where we're having inadequate storage and lack of freezer space here? Um, what what's what's the what is behind this? How we found ourselves in this situation? And it just mind boggles me how we have so many fundamental departments, so many problems within our national healthcare service that have just happened over the last fourteen years. You know the consistent reduction of things by by the conservatives of reducing and making things more difficult for the nhs you know they they keep talking about real terms investment and yet um time and time and time again you're seeing rising rising problems with our national healthcare service and there they are telling them they're telling you that they've made record investment this is pretty abhorrent especially uh, like i said if you're somebody who has a body a loved one or whatever waiting to be taken to crematorium or or whatever service uh, you desire when someone's life is gone or they need to be kept in freezer space for whatever reason and this is actually happening to them it's pretty 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 um pretty uh, pretty horrific really i'd have to, to say um so let's read more into the story about why this is happening so Bodies have been left to decompose at NHS hospitals across England, according to reports by inspectors. So officials from the Human Tissue Authority, the HTA, said inadequate storage facilities and a lack of freezer space meant some bodies have been left at unsuitable temperatures for too long. Official HTA guidance says bodies should be moved into frozen storage after 30 days in fridges or before, depending on the condition of the body. However, a series of reports have shown that, that NHS trusts are not always adherent to these rules and keep bodies in fridges for far longer. Why? In one case at Leeds General Infirmary last year, a body had not been moved into a freezer storage for 70 days and showed signs of decompensation. De the HDA report said the inspection team noted a body that had been in storage for 70 days had not been placed into frozen storage despite being released by the corridor. Body showed signs of decomposure and had soiled sh shuddering. Second body had been in storage for 47 days and also had been the subject of a corridor's release notification and had not been placed in the frozen storage and showed signs of de uh, decompression. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the words, but I just, I'm thinking to myself, how is this happening? Like, who's looking after these bodies? So it's it may not be a case of just, it's not a case. <sighs> Sorry, but this is not a case of lack of storage this is is this more of a case of just lack of staff members not keeping track of these things is that what it is inspectors also said there was no cleaning schedule for the body storage at Leeds General and that the door from the visitors area to the staff room is not fitted with a lock this allows potential access to the main laundry what <coughs> it's not fitted with a lock So someone could potentially come in and steal the bodies. It comes after publication of an independent inquiry in, uh, report into the case of David Fuller, who sexually abused the bodies of more than 100 deceased women and children in morgueries in Kent, calling for tire restrictions on access to the facilities and the introduction of CCTV. Yeah, 
there's no reason why there should be CCTV in those places. There's no reason why they shouldn't be. There's no reason why they should not be behind a locked door. Like it's just there's no reason. There's no excuse for them. In uh, 2022, HCA inspectors also found major flaws at the Royal Black, uh, Blackburn Hospital, discovering two bodies in an advanced state of decomposure as a result of not being moved into frozen storage after 30 days. King's College Hospital in London has critical shortfalls in 2022 with maldi and infested conditions for body storage. Oh my God. At the time of the inspection, there were several adult bodies which had been stored in excess of 30 days in the fridge unit, inspectors said. While these bodies were subject to regular conditions, checking signs of uh, deterioration were present. Bodies required movement to freeze the storage to prevent further deterioration. However, the long-term storage unit was at capacity. The John Ratcliffe Hospital in, Hospital in Oxford also had an inadequate storage space and inspectors identified a number of bodies which had been held in refrigerated storage longer than the recommended 30 days, which were beginning to show signs of deterioration. The Health Service uh, Journal HSJ, which first reported the issue, said it had found at least 10 cases across the country since 2022 where inspectors discovered one or more bodies had started to deteriorate. More than a quarter of a million people die in the NHS hospitals each year in England, a death that has to be registered with council within five days, while a doctor may often register a cause of death. More complex cases may refer to may be referred to a corridor. In such cases, the registration of death cannot be uh, completed until the cor corridor concludes his or her investigation, but experts warned that delays were building up because of overcautious doctors were referring more cases, many unnecessarily, to corridors. A post-mortem examination should be carried out as soon as possible with the NHS stating that they, it should usually be completed within two to three days. Uh, to, but delays have meant bodies held at hospitals for longer and many hospitals cited a lack of storage space as a reason for bodies not being transferred to a freezer. Okay, so a lack of storage space is also playing a factor. The National Association of Funeral Directors had previously told the Telegraph that the death care sector was crumbling because of the snowball effect of delays. It said that causes uh, that the causes included a shortfall of pathologicals, an increase in the number of GPs referring to corridors, delays to the coronal system, and plans to introduce medical examinators ex exacerbating bottlenecks in a system still reeling from the pandemic. Yeah, it, the pandemic obviously, um, the recovery from the pandemic obviously they had um, a lot of bodies to process during the pandemic. I think that's important. But it has been several years, so what they've obviously not been able to to recover properly from it. I'm not sure how much the health the health department obviously have been addressing this issue to try and mediate mitigate this issue uh, since since the pandemic. Because obviously, yeah, we know that there were far more bodies for them. HDA spokesperson said the concerns were discovered through the, the organisation of on-site inspection process. The deceased should be stored at temperatures that preserve their conditions and should be sufficient storage provision and alternative in places if needed, he said. We expect all licensed establishments to be compliant with our standards and ensure the dignity of the decent of the deceased is maintained. When we find shortfalls, we work with establishments to ensure an action plan for improvement is put in place. Lessons are learned and the issue is escalated within the establishment when necessary. Many of the hospitals in question said they have improved processes since the inspection findings findings. They say they've improved, but the next round of inspections will, will decide whether they've improved or not. Dr. Mangus Harrison, the Chief Medical Officer at Leeds Teaching Hospital NHS Trust, said, Our aim is to provide a safe and dignified service for our mortgages for people who have died, and unfortunately, in this instance, it was not the case. We have now improved systems in our place to include better communication with our corridor and respective partners to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Spokesperson for the King's College Hospital NHS Foundation Trust said it had significantly increased its size for a mortuary provision. An Oxford University Hospital spokesperson said, We take great care to ensure that our patients are always treated with some compassion and dignity, including after death. Some deterioration of the deceased is expected in refrigerated storage, even for short periods. We would not normally fulfill criteria for notification under duty of cantor guidance. He explained that the usual practice is to transfer deceased to frozen storage and if they are to be stored for more than 30 days, this uh, though this depends on the condition of the deceased, location and availability of appropriate freezer space and the likely timing of transfer to funeral directors for whom received the deceased in a frozen state bring additional challenges that could delay a funeral. Spokesperson added the freezing itself affects the appearance of a body and therefore tends to be avoided when the deceased is likely to be moving to a funeral director's care or the very near future. The Oxford University Hospital Mortuary has recently been refurbished and expanded to increase its capacity in the context of rising regional and national demand for mortuary facilities. So there has been an expansion increase in capacity in the Oxford University Hospital there for, for reference. 
um, which is a good thing um, for, for that part. But obviously, this is this is obviously something that should not have happened. And I think yes, I think a very important factor. I think yeah, we can't. Uh, what obviously <clears throat> the aftermath of obviously you know the pandemic, and obviously they kind of had to kind of uh, increase their fold. They had a lot of work on their plate. Uh, the, the, these hospitals had a lot on their plate during the pandemic and of course obviously this sector was not really talked a lot about during the pandemic there was some obviously talked about but obviously people were just saying it, it was a boon for the funeral the funeral funeral funerals um, at, at the time and I just like not thinking that not trying not to think of it like that really because that's not the way to think of it but but um, I, I'm, I imagine that there was a bit of a wind down as COVID kind of a bit of a wind down in these sectors a little bit as um as they were coming out of the pandemic because obviously the deaths were the, the deaths have dropped so that means that there was less of a need for these departments to be as much on top of it as it used to be so that may play a factor into it maybe i'm reading too much into it when they're talking about these things but still um i did question whether or not it was it was it was it a case of enough people working in these departments as well to make sure that they are keeping track of everything and the communication that they have, obviously, between themselves, uh, funeral directors and whatnot. Yeah, there is a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of um, moving parts around in this in this in this uh, <coughs> in this system to ensure uh, to try and ensure that bodies are not left in these kind of situations, and they should not be in any way, shape, or form left in these kind of situations. Just from you know a more moral point of view as well, um, <coughs> but hopefully. That uh, the next round of inspections do not lead to more discussions about this, but um, it's not really something that I know a lot of people really think about. But what do you guys honestly think? What do you guys make of this story about bodies being left to decompose at NHS hospitals across England? Um, does it greatly concern you? Have have you ever have you yourself, or do you, are you aware of any cases that have happened in where your areas are, or have you not noticed these at all? Perhaps maybe some of you guys may have, or may or may not have noticed, maybe that. When you go to a funeral and you, maybe you've seen the bodies that maybe it's decomposed a lot quicker or more than it should have had been potentially whenever you go to funerals to say goodbye to your loved ones um maybe we're, i'm reading too far into this but do you feel that the nhs are keeping on top of this this kind of in this department in this area let me know your thoughts and more in the comments section down below if you found this video informative, please hit the like button. We greatly appreciate it. Share it across social media so others are notified of this video. And subscribe because it really does help support the channel. And if you want to go one step further financially support me and the work that I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p. Or join me on Rumble, Patreon or Facebook for exclusive content as well. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope to catch you all very, very soon.